Hello, welcome to Skyward Hacks. Today I will show you how to set up Emacs for bash programming, like properly. So uh, I have a smart project here called Fi. Uh, it's a, it's like the command you have to run, and then you have a couple of library files, and you have some tests as well. All right, so it goes through everything. So it starts out with the SH mode, and then we'll go through autocompletion, code navigation, linting, running unit tests from Emacs, and as well as running a debugger. Right, so SH mode, that's where it all starts. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, and by default, the indentation is four spaces. And I would like that to be two. I like to have it two everywhere. So that's easy enough. We just do set these two. Um, oh yeah, so, so this here is the configuration. So this is a vanilla Emacs. Uh, I've only set up use package and the same and turn off toolbar menu bar mode and then I have this interaction log here up on the right hand side and um, apart from that there is no configuration so this is basically vanilla emacs so set this right and now if i mark everything i do control alt backspace no backs if i can type properly oh yeah <laughs> Uh, when you set this, you need to revert, or I use revert buffer, you need to load the file. And you, okay, so there we go. Now, when I indent, I get a two space indent. Very good. Um, next thing, iMenu. So we have this thing called the iMenu, and it integrates with bash mode. So I get tab completion for all the methods. Right, so if I want to join, uh, jump to the main method, I just do main, and I'm there. Um, and then it even suggests how to, where to jump back. Um, of course, there, is, uh, there are various front ends for this. I am I many mean, yeah, as you prob probably know, so you can get fuzzy, fuzzy search and so on. Right. So co code navigation and completion. Um, there are various ways to get this. This is the easy, easiest way is to use project tile and uh, built-in functions. So how that works is. You enable project tile, which I recommend you have it for everything. So we just put that in there. Um, and then load the buffer and you and now um, I can jump uh, if I only had a tag file and you don't need to know how to do this anymore when you have a project tile, you can just say project tile region tags and then does it and you can jump to the method here and I can pop back jump to from very nice and I even jumps to other files in my project so now I'm in a completely different file now I'm in foodlib.sh and I just jump from foo see that so that down here it says foo I'm in bin I'm in even a different directory and now I'm in the lib directory so a completely different space and uh, Protile will generate those files for me, and now I can jump around in my in my Git project. Um, so that's Protile regenerate uh, regenerate tags, and then Debra expand however you pronounce that. Um, let's see how to complete things. So, for instance, if I want to write foo life the universe and everything, I would do foo, and then a shortcut, and then that auto expands because it's open in this buffer or some other buffer I have open. Uh, you also have, you know, if you expand and double, <laughs> can do the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, I normally use hippie expand for uh, cycling through previous uh, if if commands that are with, what do you call the if conditions I've written. Um, it will then let you cycle through all the if statements you ever made in any buffer. So also very useful. So those are basically for free out of the box. I I consider Project as part of Emacs. Um, let's see. So then we have linting. There's a thing called shell check. It's an external command that you install. For instance, pacman install or uh, apt-get install. Um, and then you add uh, flight check. Which is a different package which does uh, on the fly linting 
of your source code and it works in various modes and it also has support for shell check so if I jump to initl here and I put that in um, and energy reward buffer again um, now if I do something like this one and I haven't used name variable it will now say oh it appears to be unused you should export it or remove it you know very cool and you also get flat check list errors get list and you can hit enter and you jump to that that line very good next thing um, run shell check in bash mode so uh, for like the main command that you start you have a shebang but for other you know uh, if you go to lib foo lib and uh, of course you can have a shebang there as well but I find it it's not really meant for being run so you can do this and then uh, yeah, you can see it down here it says bash uh, otherwise let's say if we try to remove it and then you say revert buffer uh, it will say sh so then you get just plain POSIX spawn shell and um, so then for instance it's not allowed to do local see in POSIX sh local is undefined and um, so then you can do this thing um, and they shell check understands that yes this is indeed bash that we want we don't want POSIX shell all right um, now on to advanced code navigation completion so this is of course with LSP and there's a language server for bash that you can install a uh, different ways to install it I, I use pacman and um, but you can also do LSP install server just write an emacs and then you get it and then you add this to your emacs configuration and um, let's say Um, there. Now, if I say revert buffer, I should get. I should get LSP. Yeah, there we go. So now I have. You can see here. I got the breadcrumb thing, and um, when I and I got, I get code navigation uh, without generating these tags. Now it's all handled by the LSP server. And you can see down here, well, um, you get uh, like inline documentation. So if I place my cursor on printf, you can see you got printf documentation down there. Uh, this also works if you have an external shell command like uh, tar dash dash. You can then get compilation like compare, compress, and so on. Um, that's nice and it understands that this one is in a different file so now I jump to foolip does it sh I have a function in there and I can jump back and um, it also lists downstairs down here that it's defined in this function is defined in, in, uh, in this file and also here you can see there's a different file barlib so this is very cool and um, so that was jumped as far as yes find references you have as well and then you have like eye candy lsp tree max symbols um, so lsp tree max symbols um, and as you might expect this gives you then a nice symbols browser in your max just have to wait a bit or there we go um, yeah so that allows you to navigate between different functions and it even has, if I do remember correctly, um, you can see it takes a bit, um, no simplest information. Um, in my experience, LSP is not so happy about this mode thing here, that kind of likes that you do this. I don't know if that improves matters. Oh well, in any case, you have a symbols browser. Um, there. I don't use it much, but some people think it's great and it's good to have it there. Um, then let's run a bash program from Emacs. Um, so I'll jump to my foob command here and I can then do compile and then I just do, just run it like that. 
um, and then it will show me the eight pin obviously any errors and here you can see there's an error on line 17 and if I hit enter on that one it will jump to that very very useful you can of course also run um, you know the bash and, and put, uh, the verbus uh, xtrace uh, file straight for Emax. I, I like to doing that a lot there is also a more advanced way of debugging that I will get to in a moment. Uh, but first, let's talk about unit tests. So there is a unit test in the library uh, called shunit2, which gives you the same thing that you are used to from other languages. So you have like hooks like setup, teardown, and then to run it, uh, you just run, you just source the shunit2 command. So the way I do that is that I always have so if you look at my project structure, I have a bin directory and a lib directory and then I have a test directory. And in the test, I have then foo test and then I git clone sh unit2 in there. So this is what it looks like. I have a setup um, where I source uh, my test file. So this is my uh, foo test sh and then I remove the dash test sh and I append lib sh instead. So this is for testing my foo lib sh file. Um, teardown and then anything that starts with test underscore is a test and then mean. So let's run. Let's run the test. Um, so let's just compile and then you run foo test and then the two unit tests are run. And if you want to uh, just disable that for some reason um, you just make sure it doesn't start with test underscore and then it's not run. So that's how you do that. All right, and then obviously code navigation works here as well and so on. Very cool. So that's unit test from Emacs. Um, yes. And uh, spell checking. Um, this is, uh, yes. This is, I like to have spell checking enabled in, let's say, foo web SH. Um, enabled in all my modes, really. Uh, so I use a five spell prog mode for that. So now if I write some gibberish, it will tell me, you know, this is, I don't know about this, this word, maybe you meant asteroids. Let's say then, Next point up, and probably the last point of the today's agenda is debugging your Bash app uh, with a real debugger. So there is a thing called um, Bash DB. So this is a command I've installed on my system, and then I have a, let's say I have this thing called real, real gut GOD, and then Bash DB. Um, oh yeah, um, you, <laughs> yeah, I want to run it on my main program, some bin foo, essentially, so real good bash dbay, and then you can run it with, I run it like this, bash dbay, and then the full path to the file, and then the parameters, or whatever you want there. And then, as you can see, um, Emacs now sets uh, the foo buffer in read-only mode. And then I can, like step, I do, I hit just end to go to next line, next, next. And then when I'm on the main method here, I want to step into that. Um, and uh, let's see, read into user input, so step into that one. And next, and next, yeah, there we go. And now you can evaluate things. You can do, I mark that thing now, and I hit E for evaluate. And now it says one, and it says um, dollar question mark. So that's the return code of the previous command of the printf, that's zero, that's success. Um, and then next, and you have many other 
many other, many other commands available as well. You can have right type help and you can get Norgio Valdi available commands. Really, really powerful. Um, yes, there was one more thing. Snippets, of course. Um, I have written a number of snippets that I use for shell programming and feel free to copy them. Um, let's see. So that's yeah, snippet standard stuff. Um, so the snippets I the snippets I like to use is I have I can take a, a new one. So for instance, I have one which is uh, just cmd for a command. So that's how I normally start my commands, like with uh, these shell options, no one said pyfail, error exit, and I got a main method and I pass that thing. I find that really useful. Um, sometimes I don't want the full thing, I just have a main method. I also have um, one of, to create functions, foobar. Um, other things I often do is I have um, local, you know, and um, and and I want to reference that. So, for instance, I want to print it up. Of, what does it call a snippet called PR for print? Um, and I can just type name. Um, I have another one that I use a lot, which is just V for variable. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, EOF I use a lot. Catalyst. Allows me to, you know, input a lot of things for escaping. Very, very useful for multi line output, user output. Um, yeah, I have a couple of others as well. I listed them and you can check them out if you want. Then, yeah, git change markers. Uh, nothing special to SH, uh, shell programming, if you will, but it's still really, really useful. So, yeah, git scatter mode. Um, so if I now jump, uh, let's see here, yeah, so if I had git gutter void, there you can see that I would change this line here and I'll add this space, if I remove this, yeah, and also integrates of course with the reg regular version control in Emacs. So that's it. Um, but all of that, you have a really powerful batch editing environment, and uh, I love it. I use it every day, and um, yeah, very pleased with all the features that Emacs offers. So you've got auto completion with Debrew, Expand, or LSP. You can choose, or you can use both. Um, code navigation with Projectile or LSP. You got linting with shell check works in both. Um, you can run your shell scripts and unit tests using compilation mode and you also have a powerful debugger called bashdb. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you next time.